great to see everybody here. I think today we'd just like to talk about symptoms of the menopause and mm-hmm. debunk a few myths and try and help people with their mm-hmm. education. Because there's lots of terms banded around and it can be quite confusing yeah. For, yeah. For, for ladies and women listening. Um, so if we could just perhaps talk about some symptoms, what common symptoms that you you get and how do you know you're starting the, the menopause and mm-hmm. how would you diagnose it? Um, Katie, you must have some experience of, of yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, my experience was sort of age 43 over a four-year sort of period, feeling uh, low mood, very teary, brain yes. fog, yes. Um, what has anxiety, palpitations, mm. um, you know, becoming yeah. a bit of a hermit, yes. um, and mm. didn't know any of that. You know, I literally no. didn't know no. what that was at all. And, and the most upsetting thing for me is that I was sent off to so many different specialists, mm. you know, heart specialists, mm. dementia, mm. psychiatrists, all, you know, mm. being made mm. to think I yes. was going mad. Yes. Yes. Um, and so actually when the penny finally dropped by seeing a gynaecologist, Yes. who actually said the term perimenopause it's like oh my god like light bulb moments yes. yeah. i'm not going yeah. mad yeah yeah um, that's yeah. right you often have a lot of symptoms in different areas of the brain you see specialists for that area so for the heart for the palpitations mm. the brain for uh you know depression maybe or migraines uh, yeah. so and no and they're, they're reassuring there's nothing serious wrong but actually no one steps back to look at the whole person and say, mm. well, there's one cause for this, which is is low estrogen or fluctuating estrogen levels, mm. which happens in the perimenopause. Absolutely. And, and also for the GP to sort of mm. prescribe antidepressants, which actually then numbed that and just made things, yes. didn't make things any better. No, no. So, it's a um, yeah, absolutely. That's a problem, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, and people people think, well, how do I know when I'm there? And and, and it's it can be it can be tricky sometimes, can't it? Even mm. menopause specialists can get it wrong. Louise is very frank about that. She didn't recognise her own menopause for a little while yeah. in herself. Yeah. yeah. So, d- d- how would you sort of describe approaching the, the, the menopause? I think two of the biggest myths around menopause mm. are that you have to have hot flushes. Yes. And that your periods have to have changed. Yeah. So for so many people, they're, mm. they're told, mm. um, even by their doctors, mm. um, well, it can't be menopause yeah. because you haven't got hot flushes. Yes. And yes. what are your periods doing? They haven't changed. Well, it can't be menopause. Mm. Um, mm. Or they're too young. Mm. Yes. Um, and as we all know, for a lot of people, mm. menopause, perimenopause symptoms start in their early 40s. Mm. Um, mm. That's without talking about those women who go into a premature menopause. Mm. Um, mm. So I think that's really confusing. And then the sort of... The symptoms that nobody might have connected. So yeah. we've spoken a little bit about the psychological symptoms that, mm. you know, certainly yeah. the three of us yeah. definitely were mm. not. I mean, I just thought I was going mad. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think things like the joint aches and pains, mm. Mm. Um, you might just think, oh, well, that's because I'm getting, getting older. older. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did. The sort of the yeah. urinary and vaginal symptoms, so the sort of repeated urinary tract infections that perhaps you're getting mm. lots of antibiotics for, mm. not recognising, oh, really, why would you recognise mm. that that mm. might be related to oestrogen levels? Mm. Um, vaginal symptoms, mm. again, a lot of people tend to put those things down to age mm. because they're just not aware yeah. that they're part of perimenopause. Mm. Yes, and all their friends experience the same, so this is just life. Exactly. It's just, just let's get on with yeah. it. Yeah. 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 When it comes to that, I mean, I yeah. lost my libido. Yeah. I'm not going to say that to anybody because, no. you know, the stigma yeah. that, that yeah. the shame with that, yeah. you know, and yeah. I was just like, I just really don't want to have sex, but I mean, I didn't yeah. want to share that with any of my friends because yeah. no. I knew that they, even if yeah. they were going through it, they probably would go, well, that's not happening to me. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. 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 You know, so, and so they're definitely not going to talk about vaginal dryness ever. So when we get to all of these ones, Yes. You know, that's where the shame and the, the stigma, stigma goes with it. Mm. And, you know, mm. and I know, know just by looking at girlfriends and friends okay. and women yeah. that they're going through the menopause. You know. Now, you yeah. can yeah. tell. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. being a bit short and a yeah. bit ratty yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Getting, like, you know, yes. sitting in the hairdressers and go, mm, 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 you know, yeah. and they're like, <laughs> yeah. you know, no, ow, ow, you know, that's, yes. you know, all yeah. of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. jumpy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. You do, don't you? Yeah. You yeah. can recognise it, but you've had to yeah. go through that. Spot that's to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. You've had to go through that. That's, that's why it's so great you're mm. talking about it because mm. you know people in the public eye are now out there talking about it. It's not mm. embarrassing or taboo anymore. And if you're talking about it, then everyone else will. That's right. You know. Yeah. 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 It's it's great. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Me too. That really will help people. Yeah. I mean, just perhaps we could say a word or two about what the menopause is and perimenopause. Mm. That's. 
Okay, so well, perimenopause is everything from your first symptom yeah. until you've had 12 months without a period. Yeah. But the problem for most people is that if your symptoms are, again, not those classic symptoms, yeah. then you probably don't even recognise your first perimenopausal symptoms. Yeah. No. Because if they're anxiety, no. low no. mood, you're no. maybe feeling really flat, mm. you've lost your confidence, and this kind of happens particularly to people at work, mm. you know, mm. kind of, they've always been really adept at whatever mm. it is they do, mm. Mm. and suddenly it's taking them longer, they're yeah. not they're being able to... The yeah, yeah, there's the lots of checks going yeah, on not um, you know sort of maybe they're describing it as brain fog or yes. you know mm. fo fuzzy yes. brain yes. Um, yes. so perimenopause is sort of basically everything before you've had mm. tw that, that classic 12 months and one day without a period <laughs> yes. that is the definition um, of menopause yeah, yeah. so yeah. clinically clinically menopause is that one day mm -hmm. and then I love that everything yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Every, <laughs> everything after it is post menopause yes but I think yes. another yes. really big myth and you must yeah. see this all the time mm -hmm. is women in post menopause yes. who are still having symptoms yes. and classically yeah. the you know kind of we would understand mm. postmenopause to be oh well it's all over yeah to yeah. sound like it the word post yeah oh great happy yeah, days yeah. period stop lovely and yeah. certainly it's for some finish. it will be some but people not for all but no it? majority i would say i don't mm. think we have really good research actually yeah. they say seven years is the average but i don't yeah. think we know a lot no and certainly i know many of my 90 year olds are still having hot flushes they yeah. come in for something else they've lived with it they've adapted yeah. mm. but they're carrying on with their hot flushes and night sweats and, and that really shocked me that's as a what, young doctor yeah. i didn't really, couldn't realize mm. that that still carried on yeah yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think the, these these definitions of post menopause means yes we're all over it, but that's not the case. Yeah. And of course, the lack of estrogen is with us forever. Yeah, on our bones and our heart and and yeah. And, and of course, we're all living so much brain. longer, aren't we? We've got thirty years at least yeah. post menopause. And we, you know, I certainly want to have an active, fit, mm. useful life. Yeah, yeah me absolutely. Too. It's not about existing; it's about it's yeah, about absolutely. You want to still be sharp, life. don't yeah. you? You want still yeah. to have good cognitive. Yeah. That's right. This thing called brain fog you mentioned yeah. is, is is a common common yeah. thing. You, well, you, and you I think a lot of women yeah. think it's only yeah. dementia, and that, yes. that's what I yeah. have. That's really terrifying. Yeah. 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 It's horrifying. Oh my yeah. god, that's it. Yeah, and actually having now, you know. Mm. being on HRT mm. I'm, I, for mm. me it's rewound me 20 years I mm. literally you know I'm thinking so yes. clearly got so much energy mm. uh, but yeah. that's the, the problem is that's why we all mm. need to be treated as individual yeah. women you can't not one size fit all yeah. you know no, that, that, yeah. yeah no that's exactly right because of course the estrogen is involved in our limbic system part of the brain mm. which is to do with our mood and our um, energy levels mm. and our, our sequential thinking our executive functions yeah so when we lose that we, it's very difficult to say prioritize things mm. you you know could just be at home and you've got loads of jobs to do but mm. you can't think you what can't do i do think, first well, yeah i don't yeah, know exactly. I'm, over, I'm just oh my god i'm just so overwhelmed i've got to sit down yeah. Yeah. and just not do anything because it's just too much information overload and yeah. it's scrambling our brains and this is because of the lack of estrogen mm. eastern replacement then as you just said yeah. gets gets you thinking logically your memory's coming back you're functioning you're yeah. going for the promotion yeah. at mm. work and, yeah. and, and you're back to yourself and essentially the brain is so highly estrogen receptive mm. that essentially mm. we're starving it mm. aren't we mm. yeah exactly if you're one of those women who's going through yeah. really severe symptoms yes. and you're yes. having those really severe yes. peaks and troughs and I think it's often worse in the perimenopause yeah. the time before menopause because the, the, it's chaotic our estrogen levels yes. Up and down, up and down. It's that if you look at a graph one day than another. Up and down, it's chaotic. Well, yeah. How the hell does that make a woman feel? Mm. It's chaotic yeah. in, in themselves because one minute they might think, oh, I'm fine, actually, it's, it's okay. That was because of this, that, and the other that yeah. happened. And then, um, but it's not, it's their estrogen being low that time. The next month, not too bad. Next month, worse. Mm. And, and so that's why it's insidious yeah. onset. And of course, that it? just it's increases the anxiety, mm. doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Not knowing not how knowing. you're going to be from no, one day to the next. You can't trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. 
can you? Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. and that's really really. And also it hits you it, mm. right in the probably the busiest time of a lot. You know, a lot of women who have kids. If you think about it, their kids are possibly you know going into those teenage years. So you've got the whole secondary school yes. thing. Your parents are yes. aging, and suddenly and the, so, so all I did, I blamed it on everything else yeah. except hormones. Mm. Yes. And yeah. that, that's yes. why we all keep yes. getting you know. It's, it's a time of stress. I mean, yeah. there's job problems. There's teenage children who yeah. could be problematic. Elderly, you know, yeah, bereavements. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, so there's a lot of juggling lot of reasons going, on, isn't going there? that, that yeah. people could attribute, but it's not that actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the problem. Can I ask a question? So, I've mm. got a couple of friends that are going uh, through the menopause, but they're having no symptoms. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perhaps, but should they, because we talk about the heart, the bones, mm-hmm. should they take uh, HRT or mm-hmm. estrogen? Mm-hmm. Well, I think there is an argument for actually, even if you don't have symptoms, because I get asked could, this a lot. You could I actually have like for answer. the benefit of your bones and for the and for yeah. your cardiovascular health, decreasing your risk of bowel cancer, probably helping prevent uh, dementia and type two diabetes. Mm. We go on statins, don't we? Yeah. To, for our cholesterol, for mm. our heart, we have no symptoms at all of high yeah. cholesterol, um, and there's not much evidence for women potentially with statins, but yeah. yeah hormones there's lots of evidence how it can yeah. help all those things we said yeah. so I think there could be an argument I think it's all about the individual really the individual yeah, yeah. Think it through. Friends, yeah. that yeah. wouldn't necessarily be no, no. but yeah. I think also the vaginal symptoms yeah. for a lot of women mm. who say they sailed through menopause yeah. it's a nasty sting in the tail yes. to find that in your maybe your late 50s early 60s yeah, course, yeah. suddenly you're experiencing those things yeah. and again of course mm. you've sailed through you've had no symptoms then, so so why would vaginal dryness, soreness or irritation yeah. mm. be anything to do with menopause? Yeah, so then course. those women end up so living then, with yeah. that, mm. you know, sort of for mm. a lot of them, mm. they become elderly ladies yeah. with these issues mm. and urinary issues as well. Mm. And then consequently, they're constantly in discomfort. That's, a really, good point. Comfort, That's yeah. a really good point. You wouldn't put two and two together no. at age no. 65. No. Oh, it's the menopause. No, it's the menopause. I've got yeah. urinary incontinence and, uh, you know, vaginal dryness. Yeah, and of mm. course there are lo- the, lo- the local estrogens as yeah. well, mm. which are not mm. officially classed as HRT, no, Rebecca, are they? That just a um, little pessary. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you've so got the little vaggie fan you know, pessary. Yeah, that's it. You could take that for a whole year. year. Yeah. Two, t- twice a week, a whole year is equivalent of one HRT tablet. Yeah, for a whole year. I do so that it's so yeah, it's, a couple of times a week just to make sure. Yeah, but yeah. again, it's really worth those women, yeah, your friends, I mean, I get having that it. information mm. because, yeah. you know, even if they choose... And it should be a choice, shouldn't it? It should be an informed yes, choice yeah, about what to do. Even if they know the information and they have this information, yeah. they go, do you know what? Actually, I'm still not going to do it. Yeah. If they know that actually, you know, sort of, there are the local estrogens, mm-hmm. or even if three or four years yeah. after they think they've gone through their symptoms, mm-hmm. they suddenly think, mm, maybe I would quite like to have a low dose of HRT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's also okay, yeah. Rebecca, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, because I've is. got a girlfriend and she's the same age as me, mm. and then, but she's had no symptoms, mm. but mm. she's just had her first DEXA scan and okay. she's got osteoporosis. So she's right. quite oh. yes. <laughs> yes. to say, Interesting. Yeah. but she's, yeah. you know, no, I had anxiety, a no. hot flush, no. no. had nothing, you know, no. when we've gone through the list yes. of things, yes. she yes. hasn't had any of them. No. No. She's still as horny as ever, she feels great <laughs> and she looks great, yeah. but she's been diagnosed and she's a dancer mm. and she's yes. been diagnosed with osteoporosis okay so she yes. said to me you know yes. you keep yes. asking on about hrt and mm. osteoporosis the heart yeah. pelvic floor you know yeah. do yeah. i go mm. yeah and then i was like well i would go personally i can't tell you to yeah. but yeah if i was you i would take estrogel yeah. i would go and get some yeah. from your yeah. your um c- your gp yeah. Treatment, yeah 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 inside other things because yeah. you know Definitely. other than the exercise you do and everything but it's so. interesting what you say as well meg you know we said mm. uh, lots of my friends say oh but i haven't got any symptoms Mm. Or, or older older friends say that I never had any yeah. symptoms, mm. yeah. and maybe, and some of that is that is absolutely right. Yeah. But actually, they don't have any symptoms, but yet they're on antidepressants. Yes. Yeah. 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 They, 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 they just that accept bit. that they're not sleeping, yeah. but that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've got vaginal dryness. Yeah. Mm. So actually, we have to be quite careful when people yeah. say they haven't got symptoms. Yeah. And some people have come to me just as your friend yeah. said, "Look, I would like to try this because I'm worried about my uh, risk of osteoporosis. Mm. My mother had it, etc. Yeah. Um, and they may have a small symptom, and and I said, well let's just try for a trial for three months and you can make the decision mm, yeah. um, so they start it and actually they suddenly feel better yeah. in ways yeah, that they 
had adapted all so far yeah. that they had just taken as normality yeah. Yeah. what is normal and mm-hmm. actually they felt a notch up is there something yeah, to be right. said for it almost being... I mean, are there other countries in the world where people are giving it? It's almost like a preventative thing. But yeah, yes, it does. It yeah, seems to have yeah, so yes. many yeah, no, pros. But no. That's right. But, know. but there should be a debate about I it. I think there should be a big debate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing that frustrates me, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a, a lay person. I'm only doing what I'm doing because of my... Like Meg, you know, experience. our own experience. Yes. And, and it's almost sort of not right that... You know, I'm glad we're all doing it. But mm-hmm. The three yeah. of us have yeah. all sort of, yeah. you know, have these websites and Facebook groups to help women, and yeah. you know, it almost they shouldn't exist. So, what, yeah. what is kind of going wrong? You know, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, well, I mean, we're I know, like that, you know, we? we sort of all just men. Yeah, but I don't know any men's. I don't know any men's health issues where these men have had to all sort of yeah, campaigning, no. and it's such a yeah. huge thing, I suppose. And I think, I think it is more of a priority now because um, women are living longer. So, yeah. it, although of course it's. Been been around forever the menopause mm. every, everyone will, will go through it if they live long mm. enough but that's the key in Victorian times the average age of uh, death was 59 mm. and the menopause at 57 so they mm. had two years to endure yeah. Yeah. now of course the average age is 51 and we average age of death is about 83 so we've got 30 years yeah and women's mm. place in society has changed yeah. so that's true. we yeah. are working we, we have a high functioning society men yeah. and women yeah so when you go and do the shop for for tea you don't go to the corner shop and see what the butcher's got in for that mm. for that no. which may have been the case sort of 30 mm. 40 years ago you you go to your supermarket and baked beans on toast well that sounds simple but no mm. there's about 10 choices of baked beans yeah now if you're a menopausal woman and, and having yeah. this brain fog and overwhelming even choosing that mm. it can, can, mm. be, can be challenging so yeah. we, and we live in this world of information emails constantly yeah. to keep up with it's that it's overload keep, isn't it it's, it's overload yeah. so I think so many more women are suffering and it's mm-hmm. come, come to or leaving their work and they need that they need to carry on for financial reasons absolutely um, all these sort of things yeah. so it's become more of a crisis in a way yeah. so a lot of detractors are, say well menopause has been around for ages what, why the big fuss now but I think that is why that there, yeah. there, is, yeah. there is a reason that we need to make this a, such a priority yeah um, um, yeah. you know it's changed our society and, and maybe also the whole sort of HRT scare story with the oh, women, women's yeah, health initiative yeah, yeah. it's kind of put back all the good work that was you know, everything, that everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. why Diane's yeah. Make Menopause Matter campaign is so important because you know yeah. it's one mm. thing you know it's fantastic mm. it's kids are now learning about it at school yes, but we need the you know mm, we need brilliant. the doctors to mm. be, you know because we're aware now yes, and we need yes. it's, like, it's the know, whole of society yeah Diane could you just say a bit about what about the campaign yeah, 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 sure. So it um, so it's called Make Menopause Matter, yeah. and it's got three aims. So there seem to be three key areas mm. where we have huge knowledge gaps, yeah. which if we fill, yeah. would just make things better for everybody. Yeah. So the first one is GP education. Uh-huh. We desperately need our GPs to mm-hmm. be educated on a mandatory basis. Mm-hmm. Um, so everybody going to medical school, and it's... The campaign says GPs, mm-hmm. I think, yeah. but actually, mm-hmm. I think it should be wider than that. Mm-hmm. I think everybody who goes to medical school, doctor, right. yeah, yeah, everybody who goes to medical school yeah. in their first two mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. they should be taught a basic understanding. Yeah. Now, nobody is expecting a GP to be able to do the complex work yeah. that you might do here in this clinic, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but to be able to recognise what the symptoms mm. are, mm. when it happens, yeah. and what the first line treatments yeah. are. That would be great Simple for women, stuff. It? And actually, mm. it's not that difficult, it's no. not that difficult to teach. No. You no, know, kind not. of, that could no. be a no. two hour lecture, yeah. as yes. long as it's factual evidence yes. based advice. So yes. that's the first ask. Yeah. The second one is to have guidance in every workplace mm. for all the reasons that you said earlier. Mm. Um, more women in the workplace, yeah. more women over 50 in the mm. workplace than we've ever had. Yeah. The fastest growing demographic in yes. the workplace, total yes. no-brainer. Yeah. And the third one was to have menopause included in the new RSE curriculum yeah. Yeah. from September 2020. And we achieved that in July. Brilliant. So that Brilliant. was <laughs> fantastic, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in nine months, yeah. nine months after the campaign was launched, we achieved that. Mm. Um, Katie and I were back in Westminster this week to speak to more MPs Mm. and sort of lobby for these changes. Mm. Um, And I think the campaign currently has 35,000. We 
just gone over 35,000 signatures. Yeah, right. um, but we'll yes. just keep campaigning until Great. it happens. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. this lovely lady has been very helpful. Yeah. Bless Thank her. you. <laughs> well done, Mike. That's fantastic. <laughs> Woman power. Yeah. Yeah. If we can get the young to understand it, get boys and girls, yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, then that's going to be fantastic, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. And another thing, to, just to put out there as well, um, the perimenopause. Mm. A lot of people, I hear all the time in our clinic here, they say, well, my, my doctor says I can't start it because I'm still having my periods. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a that, common yeah, misconception. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I, I didn't yeah. have hot flushes and I was having periods, so no yeah. one put two and two together. No. Mm. It's perfectly correct to start at HRT and mm. at that early stage. In fact, we say the earlier you start HRT, mm. the greater the benefits of mm. the heart and the brain. Yeah. Mm. Surely it should be that as soon yeah. as the symptoms become you know, kind of invasive on your yes, life. Yes. That's the point That's to the trigger fact. Trigger, isn't it? Yeah. So when women say to me, so they say to me, you know, I'm, um, you know, but Meg, won't I be um, estrogen dominant because I'm still having my period? <laughs> oh. That word, that <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so can you explain to please why you will not be? So if you're still having your periods, but you're having the symptoms. So what happens when you're having yeah. your periods with the perimenopause? Pause. We should estrogen fluctuates because yeah. the ovary doesn't always release an egg every month and your periods become irregular so your estrogen levels are not following this regular pattern yes. before so you, the brain's working hard to, re, to release the, the egg and sometimes you get quite high, a high peak of estrogen yeah. and then, then it doesn't and then it fails mm. again it's a stuttering stop of yeah. failing of the, of the ovary so it's not a nice easy elegant decline in estrogen levels it's, it's on off on off on off and, and, and that makes periods become irregular and this fluctuation estrogen then gives you horrendous symptoms of migraines mm. yeah. of mood and that's if we add in estrogen then when it's fluctuating um, it stabilizes yeah. these peaks and troughs so it's more of a gentle undulation yeah. mm. and, and 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 the brain responds and the, the body responds mm. well to mm. that so the average level of estrogen is is normal mm. um, with these peaks and troughs the average level is still too low and you're suffering. Yeah, so so you around, won't be over over estrogenized. Yeah, because I think around much. sort of normal women just talking together say, you know, they have this whole um, frightening thing that if they, you know, if they put too much estrogen in, they're going to get breast cancer. So mm, this yeah. is what we need to break not, this. Because estrogen not, no, it's in, in, within HRT, it's not the estrogen that triggers yeah. it, that potentially could maybe increase the risk mm-hmm. of breast, yeah. breast cancer. It's, it's possibly the progesterone. Um, yeah. and, and it's actually and the it's synthetic type. progesterone. And that's yeah, right. It's the, yeah. the type of progesterone. So this so is good important. to get out. Because I hear so, yeah. women talking and this is the, that's that right. whole word, estrogen dominant. Oh, I think that's become a bit of an internet thing. Oh, it? Has, it has yeah, you, know, you, you yes. see lots of groups on yeah. on social media talking about that. Mm. And unfortunately, it just comes back to that. Yeah. Because we're not educated not about educated, it. Because yeah. we don't understand, yeah. you know, sort of the hormone levels and what yeah. they do it. Do it so yeah. they um, feel and because people don't know... Mm. They just, they're, they're, this kind this of whisper goes around. Whisper and then it's yeah. 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 a myth That's again. Exactly. Yeah. Again, isn't exactly. It? Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. so yes, it's the the right type of progesterone, the yeah. body identical, the natural progesterones. Mm. I thought to be we've got a five year study saying there's been no increased risk of breast yeah. cancer with yeah. that, for example. So yeah. you know that's 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 hugely encouraging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we need to get that. Out we need to get that out. How safe it is, definitely. HRT, yes, is the benefits far outweigh the risks. Yeah. In the majority yeah. of women, mm. um, certainly between the age of 50 and 60, the earlier we start it, the better the better. benefits. And if you can have the, the right type of HRT, you can even minimise those very small risks mm. further. And yeah. we, were, we were saying earlier that those ri- the risk of breast cancer is incredibly small, yeah. lower, well, looking at all types, the old-fashioned yeah. types, yeah. Yeah. less than drinking two glasses of wine every night. Well, I know loads I know. of my friends do that. Yeah. But that's a higher risk of breast cancer. Yeah. And obesity yeah. and being overweight is six times the risk yeah. of being on HRT significantly, significantly yeah. higher so yeah. that's so a we, yeah, really so it's important just that message, what getting it? because there is just yeah. underlying yeah. Yeah. whisper of women talking they're not really knowing and they just say that word and then they all seem to think oh no I'm not going near that yes, and I think exactly. that's because people would rather read a quick you know, sort of um, tabloid headline and believe it rather yeah. than, you know, yeah. this whole fake news yeah, thing. Yeah. That's why it's so important we're all getting out this sort of evidence-based, you Absolutely. know, right. you know yeah. information. You know, because women just cannot to. get their head round that they can be having their periods and take HRT. No. I think I mean, that's, yes. they just can't get their head round. Mm. I think that's partly to do with the fact that they don't understand just how small some of those doses are, yeah. but how effective they can be. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, to stop but, the fluctuation really yeah, to make, yeah. it, make it like that rather than like this yeah. that's all they'll, they, it does a small mm, amount mm. to start with and it, yeah. it just smooths everything out I think we life. should just focus on perimenopause moving forward yeah, yeah I do I menopause do. is menopause, one day yeah. forget yeah. it yeah. 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 perimenopause yeah. get in there and get treatment yeah, yeah. isn't it yeah. Really, yeah. if you're Absolutely. suffering because everyone always goes but I'm just perimeg I don't need it and I'm mm. like oh. but I hear anyone now say that to me so it starts of course in your early 40s for the majority absolutely remember one in a hundred women yeah, are under 40, under 40 so yeah. they're 30 so yeah. some, some people can have it from yeah. There. yeah so that's why educating our school children is yeah. so we'll put it on their radar hopefully yeah yeah because if they were because i would think like back when in my early 40s when i had no clue about this am i going over mm. i <laughs> basically did self-medicate on alcohol when i felt that's that rubbish right. mm-hmm. i just that's drunk right. more because Absolutely. i was like to numb I'm the not feeling, yeah because mm. i was feeling a bit low and I a bit out of all the time. And all the time. I would do we this. Do it's only, and then when I look back now, sort of 13 years ago, I was 100% definitely doing that at certain yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Without really doubt. common. Absolutely. That, that really common. Well, mine it? was food. I said I just comfort ate because yes. of, yeah. the, the more I, you know, just to feel better or feel yeah. nothing. Mm. Yeah. Actually, sometimes yeah. it's better to feel nothing than yes. to feel. Some, yeah, yeah, it is. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you become a hermit, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, ladies, yeah. this has been fa- yeah. really fascinating, and and great. and great to hear all your stories. Thank, Thank you. you, and I hope you. hope that has helped people. Hope so. With yeah. uh, the education, really so. and really, please go and get some help if you're if you're suffering. Absolutely, um, some safe help that will help your future health as well. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>